Chapter 2. Playgirls' Behavior. In general, there are acknowledgeable and non-acknowledgeable playgirls that come from all backgrounds. Acknowledgeable also known as unmarried playgirls, don't value following formal traditional ways of marriage or respecting others' privacy. Many of them proceed through a relationship without being held accountable for living an unrighteous lifestyle. If they aren't present 100% of the time, suspicions of unbelief in God diminishes over time. Seeking revenge against the main guy or having been taken advantage of at an early age, both reasons have a huge effect on why more playgirls exist. Although this book discusses homosexuality, it is mainly about the opposite gender relations. Playgirls date multiple guys for various reasons and have habitual tendencies when it comes to relationships. Unmarried playgirls, tend to have several guys thinking they are the main guy, the newer guys perceive them as honest gals. Acknowledgeable playgirls are gals who admit to having a boyfriend or husband, one of which is the main guy. They don't intend for a side dude to surface if the main guy isn't supportive of a polyamorous relationship. They expect the side dudes to keep boundaries to avoid physical and verbal fights, and they expect them to accept the other commitments. If more of them lived a righteous lifestyle, they would submit in the original marriage rather than, being extraverbal in conversations with their spouse. And so they allow him to lead while validating the, I am a diva mentality. Some of them have had a delinquent parent while growing up, and as a result, they don't even value having the main guy. They validate specific elements of the relationship, to have an excuse to gather a new guy, even though they fear being exposed to a guy that thinks he's the main guy. Either way, the gathering of guys is an irrational concept, whereas they tend to perceive them as a one-night stand, wanting to get down, late, or road. Most playgirls say the other guy was a mistake, instead of saying, I was desperate for attention, money, or sex. Even if they hustle the guys for material things. When these gals get caught with a side dude, they often tell the main guy, I won't mess around again. However, they are in a habit of accompanying the other guys in relationships. And obviously, the guys don't mind being accompanied part-time. The available time, either means, the guys compare it to a full relationship or only value part-time love. Though some guys ruthlessly and vainly have sex for the pleasure of dominating gals. Many acknowledgeable playgirls tend to dance at strip clubs with or without the main guy. Unfortunately, these are gals who use the quote, sisters before pimps. Being an acknowledgeable playgirl doesn't mean embodying gentle diviness, allowing a guy to open doors, paying a tab at dinner, and being honorable. And it doesn't mean an acknowledgeable playgirl will be a likable gal with parents. Acknowledgeable playgirls have to be reminded by their guy's friend when they're not acknowledging him as a gentle diva can do. But generally, acknowledgeable playgirls don't exercise a gentle diva status enough. While some gentle divas exercise being a playgirl, they acknowledge a guy's needs without validating whether he is needy. Gentle divas acknowledge paying the tab, when they ask a guy out on a date, they also acknowledge stewardship. The polite way is to pay the tab when a gal asks a guy out on a date. For decades when a guy asked a gal out, he paid the tab, this role is shared nowadays relationships are giving and take. Tailor-made privilege and wealthy playgirls embody a gentle diva status. The classy gals that be gentle or old school, embody a classy lifestyle to avoid the playgirl mentality. Being privileged, tailor-made, and wealthy does mean a gal has class. Non-acknowledgeable also known as married playgirls, tend to hide the marriage ring to enter into a fresh relationship. When non-acknowledgeable playgirls are married, most of them hide any existence of other guys to the husband. Older playgirls in their 60s and 70s take care of home before they chase. Older playgirls whether acknowledgeable or non-acknowledgeable, have had time to acknowledge their need to feel valued in a relationship. They have also had time to acknowledge, playing over guys won't get the bills paid. And they tend to still embody most of their old lifestyle. Because their lives are usually more established as far as personal achievements and goals. Some of these gals do tend to let themselves go more than they acknowledge. They don't embrace inner strength and sophistication as much as the young gals. They do not like violence, they avoid taking over a guy's life, and so they give him space in the relationship. Once a guy in a fresh relationship wants a commitment, married gals will ignore him. Unless he otherwise acknowledges her concerns, feelings, ideas, and thoughts. All while becoming undefiled throughout the relationship, and then she may divorce her current husband to marry him. Very few older playgirls visit strip clubs with or without the husband, they too don't expect a side dude to surface into the marriage unless the husband is acceptable of a polygamous marriage. They too expect the side dude to accept other commitments. Most playgirls don't wait for a mutual attraction to date a guy, they tend to rely heavily upon their financial or influential needs once they have one. Remaining playgirl status is a norm, for both acknowledgeable and non-acknowledgeable gals, they start out playing over guys in their teens. Many guys have been willing to pay bills and bring home a side chick for sex. But if a gal asks to bring in a side dude, she ought to be the one paying bills. It's just not fair to a husband and kids. While all this is consistent with unfruitful relationships, according to God's standards, most of them are in denial. 
These are the people that need to be reached the most concerning God. It is necessary to discuss these topics in this fashion because the soul never dies. Just as the soul never dies, certain types of habitual behavior never die, unless you overcome all habitual tendencies wisely. And actually, leave no space for more tendencies. Gals with kids. The sole purpose, gals with kids are looking for a man, is to find someone who will help them take care of their kids. While guys are looking for a woman, some gals are unwilling to let a guy know upfront that they have kids for fear of not being asked out on another date. Or, they may want to get to know the guy, before bringing their kids into the relationship. But often naughty girls tend to lose respect cursing or disrespecting guys. And some gals that classify themselves as a housewife and drink alcohol, don't value a guy being first fruits in their and their kid's life. I can't count how many gals I have heard saying, my guy doesn't do right by me or my kids. I have been there and said the same things. Is it wrong? Yes. No living God has changed the perspective man is to become the center of first fruits in their gal's life. When gals exercise drunkenness without respect for mankind, it doesn't show a belief in God. And ordinarily, they aren't supposed to be in any of these relationships by any means. Nevertheless, gals need to change their habitual thinking when it comes to comparing a guy's ways concerning God. Gals need to keep the basic guidance and structure they have in their kids' lives. And gals with kids need to wait on an eternal mate, especially throughout calamity. It is best to take steps back after acknowledging things are headed in the wrong direction from quality care for the kids. Without self-control over habitual habits, there will be none. Initially, gals were to acknowledge God through their husband but once their husband doesn't believe in God, they're to acknowledge God. Just as we are to respect elders until their actions or words contrast with God's word. Note, in this discussion worthless refers to health, not wealth. A gal that dates a young guy is called cougar. There are times an older gal may have dated a young guy's family member while he was a child. During which time she may have been drinking and using drugs to a point of purposefully using the older family member's finances recklessly. This includes material objects, money for gas in a car, rides to work, or even a place to live. And this may have hindered the young guy's growth as a child therefore, she repairs her debt obligations by paying or taking care of him, once he grows up. But generally, a gal marries or dates a much younger guy when he feels worthless, and a guy marries or dates a much older gal when he feels worthless. Often the older gal, be done used multiple guys and have multiple young gentlemen she ends up giving back to. This happens with working and non-working class gals however, only the working class can give back. Consequently, the older gals never can remember the people they have hurt or walked all over throughout the years. But the victims were also the people who helped them get where they are today. Convenience is for a marriage of harmony, so don't be supportive of forming a relationship that includes sex for convenience, also known as friends with benefits or FWB. Why do playgirls have access to multiple guys? The prostitution clientele is only one reason, also, social networking websites, digital dating has led to naughty girl roles openly. Many gals are seeking non-commitment romances. It is when gals seek out the pleasure that comes from no strings attached sex without striving, to create emotional bonds dating multiple guys. With unlimited access to guys via the internet, there is no acknowledgement of working issues out in relationships, when other relations become unavoidable. This is when tempers flare. The social digital dating trend appears to be turning long-term commitments into a thing of the past. The original goal of a relationship would eventually lead to a commitment, and then marriage to follow tradition. With the guy asking a gal's hand for marriage rather than, the gal asking a guy's hand for marriage. Though traditional marriage has always included some form of polygamy since the beginning of time, whether on the down low or not. The naughty girl roles consist of sexual characters with outfits that are used, in the seducing temptation of part-time love relationships with strange guys. They may even do threesomes, dance at strip clubs to ruthlessly and vainly have sex to dominate guys. Sometimes the roles are played by a wife for a husband in the privacy of their home. Often the character consists of a bombshell, dream girl, dirty cop, French maid, maid, nurse, police, secret wishes girl, sexy maid, schoolgirl, and even a working girl, etc. Some materialistic gals and want to be divas tend to date working guys for influence, power, money, and other financial needs. They refer to naughty girls using guys as breaking the bank. Many materialistic gals and want to be divas tend to become prostitutes, sometime during their lifetime. And many materialistic gals are often acknowledgeable playgirls. Prostitutes are acknowledgeable playgirls, who tend to be spineless, vulnerable, and weak. They desire to solicit working guys so they can get paid. This is a business opportunity, that they lay on the guys. At some point, it often becomes exploiting, when prostitutes turn on the customers, and then they tend to have their customers robbed. Most well-known prostitutes tend to brag about utilizing the entire body to date. Though escort services, strip clubs, and topless bars earn profits from the same type of gals, most people believe it is immoral and outwardly to profit this way. 
those other businesses demand is taxed, but most prostitutes haven't been willing to pay taxes on their royalties. Otherwise, their business demands would too be taxed. And sure, this type of business has been around since the late 60s. Prostitution statistics showed in 2016 there were 40 million prostitutes in the world. It is legal to prostitute in 22 countries the total revenue then was $186 billion. China came in first with the highest prostitution revenue of $73 billion, then Spain at $26.5 billion, and Japan at $24 billion. The US came in fifth at $14.6 billion. Typically, in the US a prostitute's average annual income is $290,000, the average price per trick $50. Guys had purchased was 10% although this number must have been higher, according to the income gals generated. The number of American citizens arrested annually for soliciting sex was 80,000. There were 70% females, 20% of males, and 10% customers arrested for prostitution. The cost to taxpayers in court and jail fees annually was $200 million. The murder rate was 204 per 100,000 for an American prostitute. Ultimately the number of times a year an average prostitute had unprotected sex was 300. Prostitutes who were abused as a child were 75%, and the average age of a female was 14. Many of them wanted to quit but most of them did not due to financial uncertainty. Most prostitutes said they weren't attractive to customers. Though black guys seemed to be the trending clients, and the popular service was for oral. Popular days of the week gals generated were Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Cops ought to be allowed to find them for not paying taxes rather than arresting them, with many states going into financial crisis. Pimps and prostitutes are in debt to karma more so than ever before. Prostitute mentality. Prostitutes use every vital technology resource available to lure customers the list includes, chat rooms, emails, porn videos, texts, tweets, networking websites, etc. Many of them, tend to prostitute, openly in front of businesses, and they use motels for easy access to rooms and showers. The ages for prostitutes vary the majority of them often be young females. Prostitutes dress like street divas while earning street credit either wearing high fashionable or very low maintenance clothes. They are not polite often do pay for a tab at dinner, and don't necessarily get invited to meet guys that they date parents. Many prostitutes to help further education, pay bills, or use drugs recklessly, etc. Others prostitute due to lack of education, employment, or job experience. Once they are fired from a job or get laid off, either way, it becomes a full-time, and sometimes a part-time job for them. A prostitute mentality is a very popular social trend these days for the lack thereof. But unfortunately, Prostituting does come with a social trend that says recruit other girls at some point. Oftentimes the new girls already have pimps, sometimes they are fresh prey. This can be young girls age 12 to 15 at varies what ages they start prostituting. Though prostituting has proven to become fatal over time, many gals who start prostituting end up doing it an entire lifetime. Well-paid prostitutes work to profit a certain amount daily, to afford a lavish lifestyle which includes, high-end cars, homes, jewelry along with VIP restaurant and nightclub memberships. Prostitutes are often beaten or threatened, some gals even end up dead. After prostitutes are well known their life becomes a target, therefore, they move around from state to state. Either to avoid family members finding out or continuous arrests by cops. Prostitutes often have a long list of charges, illegal drugs, prostitution, trespassing on private property, etc. The prostituting mentality needs a change from the old social trend. Nevertheless, once prostitutes pay tax on their royalties, this will help them change their evil ways. Otherwise, these gals will continue being ruthless, while vainly having multiple sex partners without addressing the elephant of fear in the world. What will probably happen if prostitutes did pay taxes, they could help their state, work on getting out of debt. And if prostitutes don't pay taxes, they will continue moving from state to state. Optimistically the states that do pay taxes can work on getting out of debt. When God said repopulate the earth and have dominion over every creature and living thing. He never meant gals defiling themselves just to seek revenge over guys, without acknowledging consequences for actions. Where kids go parentless, grandparents caring for their grandkids or mothers aren't present due to honoring this behavior as a tradition. Until the universe faces this fear that has grown the size of an elephant, the devil's flesh will continuously dominate the church Jesus established. The ministry is losing a lot of souls with this insidiousness. Ultimately escort services, strip clubs, and topless bars gals, are less defile, and still have self-value for achieving financial freedom through education. They also acknowledge using condoms more often than street prostitutes. And escort services, street prostitutes, strip clubs, and topless bars gals all ought to claim their sanity to embody an angelic personification. All this to say there is more to life than defiling self embodying a devil flesh. A pimp and prostitute relationship. 
many of those relationships are built on envy, greed, and lust, and eventually, they become blinded by the envy and greed. The irrational concepts help determine the content with one another as an object of lustful desires. While they are valuing one another's strengths from evil acts to find comfort, most times the evil acts measure whether further acceptance is possible. They never really seek to repair debt or relationships of any kind it is of no importance to them. The manner of pimps and prostitutes is anxious and hostile with rapid movement which creates tension for others around. Most pimps and prostitutes don't weigh their normal weight due to the constant movement of irrational habitation. They generally want to be on the receiving end of any bargaining, most times with controlling, loud and pushy tactics. They don't adjust to others' beliefs, they rather you adjust to theirs. They like terrorizing others who don't agree with their tactics, making endless decisions based upon fear. Down low gals. Generally, the gal is married, dating a guy, or dating a gal, and often the guys are aware of it. But most guys won't remain in a relationship once it is revealed. Even though a gal who dates other gals may remain in the relationship with a guy, it doesn't mean she values the relationship with the guy over the relationship with the gal. If the gal has felt desires for same gender since childhood, she is still seeking out the pleasure that comes with no strings attached sex, without striving to create emotional bonds. Consequently, the increase in same gender relations has made more individuals acceptable of their African ancestries than prior generations, it has also increased the brutal mentality in police departments. The down low relations have explored the same gender sensitive side, where gals are unlikely to listen to feelings and emotions in relations with a guy. It only intensifies the need for more gals to listen in a relationship, whether the same gender or opposite gender. Young girls ought to be taught to identify feelings and emotions with the opposite gender, to increase the demands of gals submitting in relationships. This is a life cycle of gals not listening. Homosexual community. It is the law and typically, homosexuals can do anything that others can. According to the Bible, God's forgiveness is available to a homosexual as an adulterer, idol worshiper, murderer, thief, etc. God promised strength over sin, which means that gays can believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. And this does refer to the transgender male or female, who lay with the same gender. In the last century divorce rates have increased, due to distorted perceptions of what is to transpire from having a relationship. There are several gender and human rights issues that have formed that I will discuss. First issue, although God said in, Genesis 19 1-13 and Leviticus 20 13, Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind, it is abomination. Those references classify the sin of gays as defilement, because there is a force that comes with being gay, and it isn't the same as in other relationships. Also, the formation of homosexuality itself has kept a person from believing in God, unbelief in God as a higher power. And the gay community tends to be more elaborate and outward while expressing their feelings excessively. When you ought to balance your feelings between the extremes of heaven and hell to avoid corruption, just as you balance between the inward and outward emotions. Excessiveness of any kind is consistent with habitual behavior without balance, order, and structure. So generally, homosexuals would need to exercise doing things in moderation. Second issue, this force has distorted man's character to watch over things of this world, and a gal doesn't have strength in certain areas as a guy does. Third issue, two gals will take care of the kids in a relationship, but two guys won't necessarily take care of the kids, and often they tend to abandon them. Fourth issue, gals that have been affected by homosexuality haven't been able to create respectable bonds that can last with having to go out to work, etc. The lesser option would have been for birth fathers to be the yoke of foundation, to allow the mother's rest. Multiple relations have hindered both foundation processes from becoming eternal. Women have a right to pursue their kids' biological fathers for certain strengths to look out for their kids. Fifth issue, the youth are often forced into homosexual relations, of whom have non-supportive parents. Whether youth are born again Christian or not, they have a right to choose a partner, and that right ought not to be distorted. Furthermore, a gay that does have kids, has a right to be able to eternally bond with their kids while avoiding fatality. And actually, this makes gays be perceived as selfish for their force in a relationship when guys and gals do have kids. Relationships have become a hot mess, and eliminating the forcefulness in relationships is a must to form supportive conversation. Having said that, when standing steady in the yoke with Christ, you don't go purposefully defiling others' purest intent. Just let loving, kind, and peaceful feelings flow naturally, is the new social norm for this perspective. As partakers of the higher righteousness, homosexuals slash gays ought to consider conditions and principles of the resurrection, just as any other person to overcome trial tests. To acknowledge responsibility as Jesus Christ followers thus his servants. To be a witness of Christ is an invitation not a demand as non-believers perceive. And it does involve determination, participation, and willpower. Does this mean the path you have chosen needs to become normal again? Clearly, it is up to God and the individual of what is to transpire. Acknowledge that God has power over heaven and earth, and then pray to ask, what will he have you to do? 
Homosexuality can involve aggressiveness, alcohol, arrogance, bullying, converting, controlling, death rituals, deceit, distribution of illegal drugs, drunkenness, gangbanging, down low, smoking illegal drugs, lies, manipulation, multiple sex partners, naughty behavior, excessive thoughts, nudity, physical fights, random sexual partners, threesomes, sexual characters, and verbal cursing. Reprobing bias surrounding homosexuality. When God destroyed the earth and its natural resources, men were repopulating with multiple women, along with the relations of the same gender, initially, there were gays. People's health was defiled with cancer and diseases, and there was no structure in the way they did things. Nevertheless, the religious haven't been utilizing the homosexual bonds of communication effectively. Many have said, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, but not Adam and man to create a child. Most religions tend to believe God will create a web of destruction in their lives if they do bond with gays. But there are a few things to take into consideration when being biased against human rights. Homosexuality isn't an eternal trial test that can hinder the walk with Christ, they have a right to pursue God and all his expectations. Their sins won't be covered, all sin must be forgiven and reproved just as Jesus came to life to do. No one has the right to stand in God's process in people's lives, and everyone inherits the ability to balance their emotions. When congregational members, pastors, or teachers say gays shouldn't come to church without changing their wicked ways, just acknowledge this already applies to all man and womankind. Furthermore, you don't have to hold grudges against the gay sin itself, and then turn around acknowledging God forgives all sin. According to Hezekiah, it is only necessary for one person to be the highest authority, everyone can't be the higher authority. And actually, this is to avoid having people's ways of life becoming distorted with God's purest intent. Can religious come to a saving grace point with God and homosexuals? Yes. All things are possible with God's guidance. Can religious forgive the homosexual community? Not enough people appear to be walking the walk, and too many appear to be talking the talk. When more individuals ravish in vainglory as a high authority, of course, it is going to rub religious the wrong way. The Bible teaches to forgive, and when ordinary people ask forgiveness their sins are forgiven. However, whether or not the biblical knowledge is on religious minds, traditions remain their comfort zone. And if you haven't been a part of the righteous tradition, they tend not to be as forgiving, and this is whether you are a part of the homosexual community or not. Even though the Pharisees too put traditions of men before the commandments. The Pharisees wanted Jesus killed for comparing himself to God, it meant to them he already thought he was a God. And so, both the homosexual community and the religious ought to avoid putting self above God and his expectations. As more homosexuals reprove their sins, it will be possible for the religious to forgive them. What homosexuals can do to help create peace? Although drifting away from God can be fatal, most homosexuals have had some acknowledgement of God in their lives. Jesus said, in John 3, 3, 5, 15, and 18 except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Also, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. In 20-21 he said the evil deeds, sin need to be reproved and truth needs to come to light. Once you accept Jesus' atonement for sin, simply change your immoral actions and behavior. And continually ask forgiveness and acknowledge vainness is cowardice to not stand firm in the yoke with Christ. Don't value getting a point across and you will win every time, whether you acknowledge the win or not. Ordinarily, you will encounter people wanting to get a self-righteous point across, avoid confrontation of any kind by turning the other cheek. Most importantly keep a calm peace about yourself, when confronting false or misleading quotations. To distinguish knowledge of the world from uncertainty, read the entire book of Matthew to get the true understanding before you judge, whether others' beliefs and tactics are accurate. Also, read the Old Testament to verify what Jesus was talking about in Matthew. These perspectives will average out the theories you seek. The tongue follows correction, but the heart follows truth. Matthew 15 8. What does stewardship mean in a relationship? It means you are personally responsible for taking care of your or another person's property or financial affairs. The managing of someone else's property, careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. As a Christian, it is the faithful use of what God has given you as gifts from money, talents, and thoughts. The use of talents is special, it is the natural ability to achieve success from a professional action using the body or mind to improve on various levels. God gives talents according to the abilities, but he rather you bring back what you reap at the altar equally given. Matthew 25,14-29, He needs you to continually reprove your love, honesty, and priorities through giving. 2 Corinthians 8,1-8, Tithing is conclusive to giving money faithfully and sacrificially. 2 Corinthians 9,7-15, 
Psalms 37,4, and generally, in most churches individually 10% tithes are needed for the church to run as an organization for spiritual growth. Why a playgirl that is a diva doesn't exercise politeness? Since these gals may be dating other gals, and playgirls tend to fear being checked by their guy with biblical knowledge. They tend to put on a show to seek attention from people whose souls are weak. The playgirl mentality itself is associated with the Jezebel spirit, because the Jezebel spirit will seek to attack, infiltrate, and undermine everything all while hating and mocking people of leadership, etc. The Jezebel spirit doesn't acknowledge its femininity traits. You got to know what you stand for during end times, and the Jezebel spirit doesn't even care about ethical values. Embracing divaness often exercises cold-heartedness, whether these are gals dating gals or not. Embodying divaness does have its downfalls, however, it doesn't have to be based upon self-centered and stubbornness. God doesn't like haughtiness furthermore, kids and teens ought to be able to acknowledge divaness as something positive, not as having a haughty spirit. Impoliteness reverses when you embrace unlimited politeness. Politeness it isn't just about paying a tab, showing acknowledgement you genuinely care about one another, exercises politeness. Make them feel unique show them respect and exercise patience. Example number one, what if your spouse said, I feel server pain in my upper back area, I need to go to a hospital right away. You don't say, go ahead I'll catch up with you. No, just drop what you are doing and go with them. Example number two, what if your spouse said, my mother may die, I have to go to the hospital right away. You don't say, I'm not going, I have other things to do, see you later. No, you go with them to see if the mother will get better first. Politeness goes a long way. Religious community. Most religious gals appear outwardly these days when they don't wear pantyhose. Whether they're cheating with a band director, choir member, deacon, minister, pastor, priest, Sunday school teacher, or treasury, what is done in secret is also unfaithful. Is this consistent with vainness? It isn't what an eye doesn't see it is what an eye can't see, though some may even mess around inside the church. Religious tend to fear being exposed on a greater scale than just the norm for dishonesty. Religious gals are preconceived as having not cheated on their husbands. Though religious gals tend to do everything in plain eyesight for the glory of God, everything that is done in secret often comes to light. God acknowledges how to deal with individuals when they lie purposefully. In this contemporary world, most gals aren't favorable of admitting they have failed when it comes to cheating. This shows a lack of dishonesty toward God, and the husband and kids. Once a religious wife has been found out for cheating, they don't necessarily do what any gal would do. Such as continue seeing the other guy even if it means leaving her husband, they work things out with the husband. Breakups in religious marriages don't happen often as non-religious marriages do. Infidelity for religious and non-religious cheating spouses varies, the cheating doesn't always happen at a church often it happens outside the church. This is one reason why they're able to keep the congregational community a close-knit society of individuals that generally, involve current church members. I have noticed within a few religious families one child may resemble another church member, due to a prior marriage or a wife cheated outside the marriage. Since religious gals are preconceived as having not cheated on their husbands, he may have acknowledged she had cheated but decided to remain in the marriage for their kids' sake. Is it wrong? No, it isn't. This is one common solution to the cheating affairs of the heart. None are perfect, no not one. All the work they do is for the glory of God, and ordinarily religious gals provide quality care for their spouse and kids. Vain behavior. Naughty girl roles have become vainer than ever before, and it doesn't matter where in America you choose to live. The term vain means producing no significance or value, that is done outwardly. Vainness can mean revealing nudity and outwardly can mean to appear unrighteous but charming. However, both terms are direct approaches to prideful behavior and can be passed down from generations through DNA. Having said that, religious and non-religious appear to show a vain outwardly approach nowadays more so than in prior years. The vain outward behavior of players exercises rebellion against the Father in heaven, and most gals don't respect them as a man but as a guy on the down low. And even religious writers commonly reveal outward opinions and statements in their books. Religious and non-religious tend to state the opinions with lack of acknowledgement that they were a part of the curse, when Eve ate the forbidden fruit, and two that they are a part of the one human race. When you don't acknowledge what vibes you are setting off, you tend to set off excessive behaviors without a righteous approach. During the times you ought to be embodying an angelic or godly character, you tend to be more revealing. Charming people tend to appear outgoing, and no one rather appears less outgoing for fear of being labeled as born. But Jesus said, when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Matthew 6 7, this meant he wasn't favorable towards vain outward behavior. Even though being cleansed by the Holy Spirit can mean following routines that can be classified as traditions. In Acts 11 8-9 Jesus said, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. So actually, what isn't cleansed by the Holy Spirit of God is dishonorable, 
and is common. And what is cleansed by the Holy Spirit of God is honorable, and is uncommon. Overcoming Vainness God guides us through Scripture with the Holy Spirit for spiritual growth. He uses the outward circumstances to get you to come or look back to Him for guidance. And He uses the significant desire to form your righteous direction for His will. You don't have to hold in those suppressed emotions an entire lifetime, and you don't have to lose faith in God. Even though vainness got passed down from your father and mother, make it your duty to forgive them for the things that you grew up, seeing them doing in vain. Yes, their sins were unfair, and it is your right to acknowledge the sin is wrong. So, find it in your heart to forgive them. Ordinarily, new generations have to try harder to overcome trial tests, and most times you can't give up. It doesn't have to be the extent of your entire story. Let go of the bitter emotions and release the hurt you have in the heart. It is up to us to change the cycles of abuse and vainness.